Today we're going to start our journey to making our first enemy AI. And for that, we're going to be making a random patrolling AI. This is going to be the base state of what our AI enemy is going to do. It's going to be in this state until we get close enough to the point where it can notice us, it starts chasing us, and then it will start attacking us. For the base of this project, we're going to be using the project that I've made for my 3D character controller. And with this project, I'll also include a player, a weapon, and a enemy model, all with animations already made for them. So let's start off by dragging in this basic demon that I've made into our scene. That's going to be our enemy. As you can see, there's a bunch of animations that I've already made for it, so that's easy to work with. And we're going to give this a couple of things. First and foremost, we're going to give this a nav mesh agent. Now you'll be able to see that it creates a hitbox in the shape of a cylinder. We're going to change the radius and the height around a little bit until it matches our enemy character as close as we want to. So something a little like this should work fine. Then we're going to come up here into window, open our package manager. We'll just dock that in our workspace somewhere. And we're going to click on this little plus icon here and we're going to add package by name. Then we'll just copy paste this in. I'll try to leave that down below in the description. com.unity.ai.navigate it's not listed as part of the usual packages because it's technically still experimental, but it works fine enough. So we're going to add that. It'll install this package, which is labeled as experimental. So do be aware of that. But now when we go back into the inspector, we can actually, when we look for nav related stuff, we can select this as a nav mesh surface, which will allow us to bake. And then we can see all of a sudden we've got our nav mesh, which will allow our AI to walk and navigate around. We can make it include certain layers so we can say we don't want you to include defaults or transparent or raycast or water or ui so it'll include nothing and then when we bake it you see we don't have a knife mesh so instead what we'll do is we'll set this to a new layer and we can just use one of the random layers here it doesn't really matter i'll go for layer six and call this nav mesh so everything that's going to be nav mesh related is gonna be on layer six we can set it to that new layer and then in include layers we just say nav mesh i mistyped it you get the point then when we bake it will ignore the player and the enemies all together it will only look at everything in the nav mesh layer so if we put in some 3d objects real quick so let's put in a cube here and let's make you a little longer just putting in some obstacles that the enemy will have to be walking around let's put another one over here and then let's put another one over there right if we put all these objects on the nav mesh layer as well and then bake this again you'll see the nav mesh now bakes around these objects so this enemy will in a moment know that it can't walk here because there's an object in its way with all that out of the way let's get back into our actual nav mesh agent here and add a component and we're going to be calling this a uh, component enemy ai patrol because that's what this is going to be a patrolling ai enemy double click it to open it up in visual studio as usual and we're going to add a couple of very before we start actually coding and that's going to be a game object for the player we'll need a reference to our nav mesh agent but as you can see it doesn't know what to do with nav mesh and that's because we need to be using unity engine.ai because we're going to be using ai navigation now that we're using that in this class we can add a nav mesh agent variable which we'll call agent and we'll make a serialized field here for a layer mask and we'll make two of them first being the ground layer and the second being the player layer we're going to put the player on its own layer because when we look for where the player is and look for where we're going to be walking we want to know which objects are the ground and that's going to be our nav mesh layer and we want to know if an object in our range is the player and we could do that through tags we could do that through looking at the specific object name which is both viable but 
doing it through a layer system is just the easiest for now. Then for the patrolling, we're going to make a vector 3 for the destination point. So that's going to be the point that we're going to be walking towards. We'll make a ball for our walk point set or not. So this tells the game whether or not this specific enemy already has a destination it's walking towards or not. And then we're also going to make a serialized field, which is going to be a float for the walking rain, which will just tell this enemy this is how far you're going to be allowed to walk any one singular movement step and for the navigation we're going to be making a new function which we'll call patrol we will first check if we don't have a walk point set we'll do something which will be a function that we're going to make in a second then we're going to check if we do have a walk point set we're going to use our agent dot set destination as destination points that's going to be the point we want to be walking towards and then the navigation agent itself is going to use ai to navigate towards that point we don't have to code anything ourselves there that's all brought to you through the unity engine itself which is absolutely amazing <laughs> And then lastly, we're going to check if our vector 3 distance between our current transform position to our destination point is less than, let's say, 10 units. We'll set our walk point set to being false so that we can set a new one again. Now, we didn't put anything in here and that's because we need to make a new function for that. So we will. Uh, let's make a void search for destination and in that we'll make a float for z which will be equal to random dot range and in order to be able to do this we obviously need to finish making the range variable which i never did so <laughs> public void range <laughs> we'll use that variable to say this range is minus range to positive range and we'll do the same thing with float for x technically it's better form to use lowercase here then our destination point is going to be set to a new vector 3 which will be our current transform position dot x plus our new x variable that we just made we will keep our current transform position y and then for the last one we're going to be using our transform position z plus our z variable that we just made and that's going to be our new destination points but this could get a destination in literally any location it's not checking for actual like viability of walking towards it so we're going to check whether or not that's actually inside of our nav mesh and that's easy to do because we can do just an if statement with physics dot raycast and we'll raycast from our destination point in the direction of vector 3 down and we'll be checking for our ground layer so this will return true if our raycast finds anything directly below our destination point that is set to being the ground layer which is going to be the nav mesh layer we made in the beginning of this video and if that is true then we set our walk point sets bool to being true and that's the entirety of this function so in our first if statement in our patrol we'll search for destination it'll pick a random z and x value set the destination point there check whether or not it's a viable location to walk towards if it is it sets walk point to true at which point in the next loop around it will no longer do this because walk point is now set to true instead it will go ahead and do this which is just setting the destination to walk towards that location and it will keep doing that until the distance between our actual object and that destination is less than 10 units at which point it sets this walk point back to false and then the next loop around of this whole function this one will proc again and finds a new random location to walk towards so now if we just put patrol in our update function we should have a randomly moving about ai but before we jump back into the actual engine itself we need to give a couple of things a value so we're going to uh get started here by giving our agents just get component nav mesh agent and then we might as well give the player a value we're not going to be using that right now but we can just do player equals 
gameobjects.find and you can find a object with a specific name here which has to match what the object is called in the scene itself so we're calling our player player with a capital p here we need to make sure whether or not that actually matches up with the object within our scene but don't worry too much about that now that's for the next part of this ai where we make the enemy chase down and attack the player as you can see it's called cube now so let's just change the name to player real quick so we'll set our ground layer to being the nav mesh layer that we made in the beginning of the video and we'll quickly make a new layer as well specifically for the player so we'll just make that layer seven we'll call that player and set the player to that we're going to be using that for the chasing in the next video so we can set the player layer here to being player Then we will go over this again in the video that actually talks about that specific issue and then the range we'll set that to fucking i don't know 15 and now in the game we'll be able to see that there's no animations yet but it's picked a random spot to walk towards it's walking towards it and now that it's reached it it's going for a new location somewhere else and we've got our randomly patrolling enemy now there's quite a lot of work to be done to polish this up obviously but that's the coding behind it when we get into the actual attacking that's going to be done through the animation so that's when we get into the animator and the state machine that's going to drive the walking animation and stuff as well for now we're going to leave it there so this has been the first part the entire project up to a walking enemy will be down below in the description so if you're watching this just after releasing you want to just immediately head into the next part you're going to have to wait a little bit for the videos but the actual project is available on my patreon i'll see you back in the next part where we're going to make this thing chase us down